of course, have come together to consider the Word of God and some of its implications. We welcome those who have joined us on live stream also. This will be our 11th exposition of the Gospel of Luke. We're going to be covering the baptism of Jesus, verses of the, of the third chapter, verses 21 through 23. I'm going to try and deal with some what I consider to be pivotal matters in this uh, in this exposition. It looks like there's not much here, but there is. And uh, after I've reviewed these verses, we're going to I'm going to give a short synopsis of Jesus' baptism from the other gospels. So we'll have a uh, kind of a thorough view of it. Luke 3, verse 21 through 23. Now when all the people were baptized, <clears throat> I say when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, and in thee I am well pleased. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age. Amen. Our next lesson will take the last half of that verse and we'll cover the genealogy of Jesus. Now, the baptism of Jesus was the place where Jesus was revealed mm -hmm. who he was. After 30 years, God was well pleased with him. Yeah. After 30 full years of living. Not just pleased, well pleased with him. Following this baptism, Jesus, of course, will be led by the Spirit up into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And then his ministry will begin. All four gospel writers cover the baptism of Jesus to some degree, some, uh, so that we'll get a kind of a thorough picture of it. Some cover events that others don't cover. You probably know already that the, the baptism of Jesus, the entire Godhead was present. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Word was manifest in the flesh. Yes. The Holy Spirit mm -hmm. was seen as a... Let me say, make my statement again. All three members of the Godhead were sensibly present. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So the Word mm -hmm. that was in the beginnings of with God was there in Jesus. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit descended in a bodily shape of a dove. Uh -huh. And the voice of God was heard out of heaven. Yeah. See, there's not many places, there are a few places, but not many where all three mm -hmm. members of the Godhead were present. Yeah. Sensibly present. Yeah, right. yeah. You saw Jesus, mm -hmm. you saw the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove, uh -huh. heard the voice of God. Yeah. Now, of course, this goes without saying that anything Jesus did was important. Yeah. That's easy to say, but that's apprehending it, that's something else. There are some people that talk down baptism, but then always remember, Jesus was baptized. You ought to be afraid to say anything about baptism that's not like in favor of it. Jesus was baptized. That, that ought to end any controversy about whether you should be or not. Amen. Jesus was baptized. How would the world, would you explain to God why you weren't? Yeah. Hmm? That's right. All contradicting theologies notwithstanding. Now we are told, for example, the things that are reported about Jesus, that more is reported about Jesus than about anybody else. 
you hardly know anything about Adam. Yeah, yeah. You thought about that, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. You hardly know anything about him. Mm -hmm. You know, when he sinned, then you don't know anything about him at all until he's 140 and gave birth to Seth, and then you don't know anything until he's 930. See, that's, that's, you don't know much about, you know a lot about Jesus. We know about Jesus before he came to earth, but when he, before he was made flesh. He was, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, mm -hmm. then the Word became flesh, that's, yeah. as Jesus. Mm -hmm. We know about his birth. Mm -hmm. There's more said about his birth than anyone else's birth. That's right. Some of people's birth is just, just a verse, that's all that's said about it, but some about his birth, his birth was announced yeah. to a group of people, and his birth was even revealed to some foreigners in another country, yeah. some wise men. Yeah. He's the only infant we have record of that was worshipped. His life was threatened while he was young. Of course, there's others. Moses' life was too. As a child, he was taken down into Egypt. Now, what I'm going through this is a kind of laborious, but what I'm going through this is to show you how much God has said about Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. He's taken down into Egypt as a child. He was taken to Nazareth then where he was raised. We get a little snapshot of how a 12-year-old that walks with God thinks yeah. <clears throat> uh -huh. when he was in the temple. Uh -huh. you got, we got any 12-year-olds here tonight? What we got? 12 years old. You're, you're 12? All right. We expect you to be like Jesus. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Amen. Actually, Hannah's quite a bit like Jesus. Yeah. He was eager at 12 to know the things of God. He was eager. I mean, they didn't have youth ministers. And nothing against them, but well, I'm not sure whether we should have something against them or not, but nothing against them. But Jesus sat with the, with the graybeards, the doctors of the law. By choice. No one told him to do this. This was his choice when he was 12. And we, we know he, he attended John's baptism. Remember, G, J, John said, there's one among you. Mm -hmm. he, he was there, whom you don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One among you. He attended John's baptism. We know he, his baptism was recorded. Yeah. He had a concentrated and extended temptation. Mm -hmm. It lasted for 40 solid, uninterrupted days. Mm -hmm. He was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights in which he didn't eat mm -hmm. and he didn't drink. Mm -hmm. So you say, you can't go but three days without water. Well, Jesus went 40. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah, amen. Of course, it wasn't natural. We understand that too. And then at the end, after, he wasn't even hungry for 40 days. He didn't even get hungry for 40 days. He was so much concentrating. Uh -huh. And the devil then, he leveled these three uh -huh. final temptations to him. The details are given. Uh -huh. We know he attended a wedding feast. He was invited there with his disciples. And we learn that wherever Jesus is, his disciples turn up. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Jesus won't give you a private like hearing not normal. We have numerous accounts of his preaching and teaching. There's quite a, the Gospels are filled with them. We, we are told about his response to religious leaders who attended his preaching. He had a, he had a word for them. His response to the common people that heard his preaching gladly. You know, he, you're getting an index about Jesus. See, why I'm saying these things is the Bible tells people a lot about Jesus yeah. And I'm very concerned that so many people know so little about Jesus. Yeah, yeah. You say, well, I don't know if that's true. Remember, I gave you this assignment one time. I don't know if any of you did it, but ask 
anybody, just anybody, I don't care who it is, anybody, ask anybody you know, what do you know about Jesus? And if it takes the person more than one minute to tell you what they know, you've come across a rare person. Give it a try. You, I know it sounds like, just, just give it a try. It'd be an illuminating experience. Even though so much, I'm just giving you some of the things, so much about Jesus' known. We know how Jesus responded to somebody who had faith. We've got examples of what he did. Someone had faith. He gave them what they asked for. We know how he responded to unbelief. Mm -hmm. He left Bethsaida because they didn't believe. He just, goodbye. That's how Jesus did. We know about his compassion. Mm -hmm. He had compassion on people. That woman taken in the very act of adultery, you know, she was ready to be stoned, he had compassion on her. We know how he responds to people that conduct business in the temple. Oh boy, we got, we got two examples of that. Someone had like a little, doing a little bit of buying and selling. What did he do? He dumped over their table, spilled out their money, drove out what they were selling and emptied the place. That's what, see, we know this about Jesus. We know how he responds to someone seeking mercy. Blind man said, have mercy on us. They, they got mercy. He gave us several statements about what, it re what is required to be his disciple. A disciple is a learner. What does Jesus, you want Jesus to teach you? He's got some requirements. They're in Luke 14. He says, first of all, you've got to forsake everything. Nothing can stand between me and you. You have to consider secondary every other personality, mother, father, brother, sister, wife, whatever. Got to come after me. Yeah. This is Jesus' requirement. Now, he won't teach anybody else. Now, he will not. And he says, you got to take up your cross every day and follow me. Mm -hmm. The cross, that's the repercussions of being his disciple. That's the suffering that results from you being, as they say, a Christian. Mm -hmm. Aren't you, if you're not willing to bear that, mm -hmm. Jesus is not going to teach you anything. That's right. He'll ignore you. I'm telling you the truth now. This is revealed in Scripture. His response to Jerusalem's ignorance. He appeared to them. He visited Jerusalem to save the people. That's yeah. why he came. Yeah. They, they didn't know what was going on, and so he uh -huh. said, your house is left desolate. You're not going to see me again. Uh -huh. Till you say, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. And the episode ended with them killing Jesus. Mm -hmm. But it's not over yet. Amen. His response is somebody asking him to settle a family dispute. We've got an example in Scripture now. I'll give you all these texts. Mm -hmm. Young man came to him and said, Master, speak to my brother that he'll divide the inheritance with me. There'd been some. He said, man, who made me a divider over you? You take care of that yourself. That's what he told him. He, refu he refused to get involved. Yeah. So know what you're doing. If you ask Jesus to help you with your family, I mean, know what you're doing when you, yeah. when you ask. Yeah. And we know his custom was to be in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. If you, were looking, if you were hunting up Jesus, you were in a certain city on the Sabbath day, you went to the synagogue, guess yeah. where he'd be. Yeah. That was his custom. Yeah. We know that he, when he was in the temple, he taught. Yeah. We know that he taught in the synagogues. Synagogues were separate structures mm -hmm. that the people met in throughout the week. Mm -hmm. And they taught and read scripture and so forth. We know he attended a special feast that was made just for him. Matthew, who was a publican, tax collector, made a feast for Jesus, and Jesus brought his disciples, he always brings his disciples, yeah. brought his disciples that came to the feast. You know how he responds to somebody who inconveniences themselves to come to him. Zacchaeus, you yeah. would children say, was a wee little man, a wee little man was he, he climbed up in a sycamore tree, so forth. Mm -hmm. Zacchaeus was short, he climbed up in a tree to see Jesus, Jesus saw him, eh? Yeah. Hey, come on down, yeah. I'm gonna come to your house. Yeah. And so he responds to somebody Amen. that wants to see him and wants to know him. Amen. So if you have in your heart, you have this desire, you really want to see Jesus, Jesus sees that. Yeah, 
He'll respond to it. He knows what he'll do if somebody comes to him by night after a full day's activity. I mean, you follow Jesus for a day, you were looking forward to sleeping because he wore his disciples out. And here's a night time when normally the Lord will be resting. Here comes a man, Nicodemus, came to him by night, and Jesus didn't say, we'll come tomorrow morning. He spent time with him. We also know how he responds to someone who wants prominence. James and John and their mother too, they ask for the chief positions. Let one of us sit on your right hand, one on your left. He said, just refused to do it. He, we know how he responds to a rich man that wants to know what to do to have eternal life, but wants to hang on to his riches. We got an example in scripture of what Jesus says to him. We have an example of Jesus' intercession. Jesus said to Peter, Simon, Satan has desired to have you as weak. You might shift you. I have prayed for you that your faith not fails. Yes, intercession. The John 17th chapter before his betrayal, he prayed for his disciples. He said, I'm not praying for the world. Jesus said that. I'm not praying for the world. I'm praying for these disciples. Keep them. See? Examples of intercession. And uh, cities that were indifferent to his miracles, he worked miracles, and they just like, so what? He delivered a word to them. A woe. He said, look, he said, if Sodom and Gomorrah saw the miracles you saw, they'd have repented. Yes, amen. He thought Nineveh would have repented. Mm -hmm. he, 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 so if Jesus has done something where you're at, and you didn't see it or you ignored it. We know we know how God Jesus yeah. feels about that. Amen. His response to religious professionals, scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees, mm -hmm. chief priests, mm -hmm. ruler of the synagogue. See, these are all religious dignitaries. Jesus didn't have a good word to say to any of them. Mm -hmm. We know that there were special people he loved. John's known as a disciple whom Jesus loved. We know how Jesus reacts when God withdraws. <coughs> my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It's the worst, it was the worst moments of his life. Yes. We know his determination to do the will of God. I must preach to the cities. I must do the works of him that sent me. We know how he preferred his disciples. He'd explain things to them he would not explain to the multitudes. I'm not going to give any more there, but there's, see, there's a lot about Jesus yes. that's in the Gospels. Yeah. But if you read it like history, you'll like miss the whole thing. Yeah. You won't see it at all. Or if this is like your daily Bible reading, you know. And you'll read that, you'll just gloss right over this. But you're being exposed to what Jesus is really like. And your aim is to get in a position where Jesus will pay attention to you. Do it now. Get in a position where Jesus will pay attention to you. And you've got examples in Scripture about that. Now, in my judgment... A great transgression has been committed when any person or any group of persons relegates Jesus to the back seat. Yeah, amen. Amen. This is serious stuff. I can't underscore how serious this is. There's people in whose lives, we hope there's none here, but if there are, listen up. There's people who Jesus is like way back in the background of life. Yeah, uh -huh. They don't live for him. They don't speak for them. They don't work for them. They don't think about them. This is, this is dangerous. Yeah. You're like tottering on the brink of eternal ruin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God will not overlook someone who ignores his son. Mm -hmm. This will not happen. Yeah. And you've got a lifetime, which you don't know how long it's going to be, but you got a lifetime to correct that situation, and there's grace to do it now. 
If a person wants to correct this, wants to bring Jesus up into the foreground, God will help you to actually mm -hmm. do that. He already has all authority and power entrusted. That's him. right. Already. So if you seek him, you'll find him, as he promised that. Uh -huh. Now let's look at our text. When all the people were baptized. Mm -hmm. Now this doesn't mean John didn't baptize any more people. Because he did, he baptized quite a while after that. Yes. When Jesus was preaching, he was still baptizing back then. So when we read this kind of language, the point is the timing. The time came for Jesus to be baptized. When that time came, John's attention turned from the people to Jesus. Yeah. Jesus' time to be baptized. John had been told the reason why he was baptizing. Mm -hmm. And he told the people why. He says, I'm baptizing because God told me that one person I baptize, the Holy Spirit will come upon him and remain upon him, and that person is the person I'm preparing the way for. Mm -hmm. So he knew that his baptizing the people was secondary. Mm -hmm. His primary thing was the Son of God was going to be made known when he, the Son of God, was baptized by John. Yeah. So when all the people were baptized means the time had come mm -hmm. yeah. for Jesus to baptize John. We know also from this that John had been preaching for six months. When Jesus, when Mary conceived Jesus, the angel Gabriel told her that her cousin Elizabeth was six months mm -hmm. she'd been she was six months with child mm -hmm. so so John the Baptist was born six months before Jesus he was six months older than Jesus yeah. now it's interesting what some people have said but why was Jesus baptized mm -hmm. particularly some of the early church fathers I'll just give you some of these Bishop Wordsworth said he came to baptize water by being baptized in it. Means he made the water holy. Ignatius, at the beginning of the second century, said he was baptized that by his submission to the right he might purify the water. Now you, may, you can decide what you think of these, but these are what people thought. Is it Ignatius, the one that was the disciple of John? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jerome said much the same thing, early Christian. He said in, he did not so much get cleansing from baptism as impart cleansing to it. So that was the some of the uh, views of the... Uh, early church fathers. I wouldn't just like throw it away, but I, I don't think that that was the answer, but I'm willing to think about it. So it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized and praying. Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, 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 that changes the picture a little bit, huh? Came to pass. It means it happened on schedule is the idea. That's, that's Bible government language. And it came to pass. Some versions read it happened that. The word translated came to pass. It means it came into existence or began to be. The idea is that God ordained it, and it, it happened. Mm -hmm. It's a word of divine government. Jesus being also baptized, he's identified with the people, see? He came to save the people. Mm -hmm. He's identified mm -hmm. with the people. Although he had no sin, now the people were baptized for the remission of sin. That's, right, yeah. That's not why Jesus was baptized. Yeah. He still submitted to the ordinance. Mm -hmm. 
He would be revealed as the Son of God in this, even though it wasn't for his sin to be taken away, it was for him to be revealed. Yes, amen. Was the idea. Now, it's my persuasion that when Philip was preaching Christ to the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts 8, and the eunuch said, See, here's water. What does hinder me to be baptized? Why can't I be baptized? Here's water. Why can't I be baptized? Now, see, I come from a background where they emphasize baptism. So, of course, it's assumed that Philip gave him, quote, the plan of salvation and told him he ought to be baptized. But I don't think that, I don't think that's it at all. I think what Philip did, he told him that Jesus was baptized. Amen. And there really should be nothing more said. If Jesus was baptized, there should. this is the kind of question you should, well, why can't I be? Yes, I'm a disciple. I'm following Jesus. Yeah. So that's what I think mm -hmm. prompted the uh, Ethiopian eunuch. But something is added. He says he was baptized and praying. Yeah. Uh -huh. And praying. Some of the other versions say while he prayed. He was baptized while he prayed. He And he was in prayer. Another version says after his own baptism he was at prayer. One verse says he was still praying. The idea is that he was baptized, he's praying, and he's still praying when he comes up. Now, Luke records eight times that Jesus prayed. There are more times than this, but he gives eight. This is the first one, when he was baptized. Mm -hmm. That's a good time to pray, incidentally. Yeah. I never really have heard anyone emphasize that. But When multitudes came to him to hear and be healed, it says Jesus withdrew and prayed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Before choosing the twelve apostles, mm -hmm. Jesus prayed. When he asked the disciples who he was, he prayed. When he was transfigured, he was praying. When he was transfigured. When his disciples asked him to teach them how to pray, he had just been praying. When he prayed for Peter that his faith wouldn't fail, so I prayed for thee. And on the eve of his betrayal, he prayed. There's eight times at diff different kind of occasions. And he prayed. Now, as I mentioned to you, I have long been identified with the people who teach and practice baptism. Mm -hmm. And I'm for that. Mm -hmm. But I do not believe I've ever heard anyone make a point about when Jesus was baptized, he was praying. I don't think I ever... Someone is bound to have made the point, but it just wasn't made in the circles that I was in. But in my opinion, this is a good thing to encourage. Yeah. What, what more appropriate time to yeah. be praying right. yeah. than when you're being baptized? Yeah. Right. Yeah. See, Colossians 2.12 says that you're saved in baptism. You're, you're saved by faith in the operation of God. It's, what's yeah. God, it's what God is going to do yeah. when you're baptized that's going to save you. So in view of that, uh, it's, it's a good good time to pray. So here he was, he goes down praying, he comes up praying, and the heaven was open. Singular, heaven was open. Is in, is in the singular too, and I understand this to mean the natural heaven. The heaven that was made in the beginning, God created the heaven mm -hmm. and the earth. And then at the end, he's going to destroy the heaven. There'll yeah. be a new heaven and a new earth. That, that, that's the heaven that was opened up. Amen. Yeah. It's like the celestial realm. Mm. It's like a buffer zone between here and the heaven of heavens. Mm. And it's a big area. Mankind has not been able to find like a like the end of this area. Mm -hmm. This is in between now. This is <laughs> this is in between where God is and where men are. Mm -hmm. No matter how powerful a telescope is, where they beam it in a in a section they thought was a black hole, yeah. they find there's all kind of constellations yeah. and universes. <laughs> they have not been able to see the end of it. Yeah. 
I gather what this text is saying was God like blasted a tunnel through this celestial realm through which the Holy Spirit could descend and so the natural heaven like opened up like saying there's something beyond this <laughs> the heavens are never opened up to anybody else Huh? Nobody else have the heavens opened up. Mm -hmm. They just peer in there, and that's where, as far as they see, they see something. There's something mm -hmm. out there. All sort of celestial bodies are out there. Thousands, millions, billions of them. They're out there. They haven't seen the end. Mm -hmm. But through that, uh, a passage was created for the descent mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit, which came from where God is. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit, it doesn't live in this vast area that can't be measured. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, God talked about if you can measure the heavens. Well, no one's been able to. <laughs> that's right. But God's beyond that. Mm -hmm. If you think that's something, you ought to see what's beyond it. Mm -hmm. Now, it's also interesting that there's more details about Jesus' baptism than anybody else's baptism. We don't have this much detail about anybody else's baptism. And uh, later I'll name some of them. There are a number, number of baptisms were given a record, but none of them had this. This kind. Well, let's, let's name some. But Pentecost, there were 3,000, and all it says is they were added. They were added. And it's also said they continued steadfast in the Apostles' Doctrine. The city of Samaria, the whole city, believed and baptized. There's not even one detail. Simon the sorcerer was baptized, and all it says is he continued to follow Philip. Ethiopia and Eunuch was baptized, and he went on his way rejoicing. See, I'm showing you that the emphasis in Scripture is always on Jesus. If if Jesus did something you do, more is said about Jesus doing it than it ever said about you doing it. <laughs> Saul of Tarsus was baptized, said he received meat because he'd fasted three days. He was strengthened and straightway preached Christ. Those at Cornelius' house was baptized, were baptized with no details at all about what happened afterward. Lydia and her household was baptized. She constrained Paul to stay and come and just abide in her house for a while. The Philippian jailer, he is baptized. He brought Paul and Silas into his house, fed them, and rejoiced, and believed in God with all of his house. Crispus and many Corinthians were baptized, no details. Certain disciples in Ephesus, who were only baptized to the baptism of John, they were baptized. After Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke with other languages and prophesied. Now to this point, here's to this point of our text, this is what we know about Jesus' baptism. Jesus came forward to be baptized. We, we, we don't have an example of anybody doing that. John at the first refused to do so. Jesus persuaded him to do it, and Jesus was baptized, and he was praying when he was baptized and when he came up. Now, unlike the uh, record of other baptisms, there is a visible and audible response from heaven. This closest thing you have of that is where the Holy Spirit fell on people and they prophesied in, in tongues. But nothing like what happened to Jesus. Yeah. This is an epochal moment mm -hmm. setting Jesus apart yeah, from everybody else. He's unique. Whatever you think about Jesus, he's unique. Yes, amen. He's unique in how he was conceived. Yeah. He's unique in being born a king. Mm -hmm. He's unique in receiving worship when he was a child. He's unique at 12 years old. He was unique in his baptism. He was unique in that he was the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. That's, that's unique. God sent his, sent his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. 
one of a kind. He is made of a woman made under the law. Nobody else was made of a woman. They're born of a woman, but he was made of a woman. He took on him the form of a servant, made the likeness of men. Like men, he had to put his trust in God. That's Hebrews 2.13. What a condescension. Talk about humbling yourself. Talk about humbling yourself. In the beginning, he's with God and was God. Now he has, now he has to put his trust in God because he's a man. Amen. Took part of flesh and blood and other things. <laughs> Enough cannot be said about the uniqueness of Jesus. Now, I'm concerned that these days there's not a lot being said about Christ. Pretty much boils down to he's really nice, he wants the best for you, and he'll help you. You know, it's kind of that's kind of what people know about Christ. But I've tried to show you here, you know, it says, it's, I hope it wasn't confusing, but that how much is, how very much is said yeah, about amen. Christ uh -huh. in the Gospels. You're learning about him. This is, a, this is yeah. what he's really like. Amen. Jesus, he was, he really obeyed God. Man, you have to tell him to obey God. He didn't have to tell Jesus. He did. He did. Men have to be told, mm -hmm. sin not. Jesus had to be have, had to, have to be told, right. sin not. He just didn't sin. That's right. Some people had to be commanded to be baptized. Jesus wasn't commanded. He just did. See, right. you learn a lot about Jesus. Now he he comes up out of the water. Yes. Get off this, the heavens. You know, I, I, I think as a child and as a young man, I thought, I thought of this as, at the introduction of this vast universe that God was far away, but then he's not far from every one of us. So I, years ago, somebody said something about it was like a curtain. It just, just yeah. parted a little bit. But on this side, it, it is vast, oh, yeah. but see, to, from, from, from yeah. God, God is not far. He, yeah. he can just, you know, I guess if there was ever a valid use of the word portal, it would be there. It, it's, uh, there was a, a place open That's right. God, so, from God's side. So you can see, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I told you this before, but years ago, when I used to travel to New York, Manhattan, I'm on business, they were building a skyscraper, and it took a years for them to build it. I forget how 90 stories or something like that. It was pretty tall. But for a long time, all you saw was the scaffolding. Yeah. It, looked like, it looked like a wooden building. That's what it looked like. Mm -hmm. uh, but it wasn't a wooden building. Yeah. When they finished, took the scaffold off, it was a glass building. Yeah. Yeah. Different kind of glass than in your windows, of course, but... Now this is what the kingdom of God and the heavenly kingdom is here. It's in a sense it's here, but it's it's got scaffolding on. You can't see it, but when the heavens and earth pass away, there will be. If you've shaped your life to live in it, you'll be at home. If you haven't, next stop will be Lake of Fire. Someone's got to say it, don't they? All right, when he came up out of the water, that doesn't mean he stepped out of the water onto shore. He ascended up out of the, he was plunged beneath the water and he ascended up out of the water. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. Now the words Holy Ghost which is King Old English, yeah. and it is still proper English, by the way. Yeah. The word ghost mm -hmm. means the seat of life. That's from Miriam, today's Merriam-Webster dictionary. Mm -hmm. The word ghost means seat of life. That's his first meaning, not his yeah. second or third. Yeah. So it's proper. I, mm -hmm. I, I prefer the word spirit, but I mean, it's, it's a legitimate Word, the words Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit mm -hmm. do not occur in Moses and the prophets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nowhere. Yeah. In, the, in that Moses, 
and the prophets, Genesis through Malachi, this, the word Spirit of God occur 14 times. Spirit of the Lord occur 26 times. So that's 40 times in 39 books there's reference to the Holy Spirit. Now the expression Holy Ghost occurs in the King James Bible 87 times from Matthew to Revelation. The Spirit of God occurs 11 times. Spirit of your Father one time. Spirit of truth three times. Spirit of the Lord four times. Spirit of life two times. Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead once. Spirit of adoption once. Spirit of God 11 times. Spirit of the living God once. Spirit of his Son once. Spirit of Jesus Christ once. Spirit of grace once. Holy Spirit one time in the King James Version. The Spirit 79 times. The Spirit of Christ two times. That's 207 times in 27 books. But what does that mean? Well, the day of salvation is a time of the Holy Spirit. For example, the New Covenant is called in 2 Corinthians 3, 6, the ministration of the Spirit. That is, He's the one that kind of governs the thing. Through Jesus, the Spirit is now given to the people of God. Through the Spirit, we mortify or put to death the deeds of the body. Through the Spirit, I'm showing you the, whole, the day of salvation, living under Christ, the Holy Spirit is prominent. Yes. Amen. Through the Spirit, we wait for the hope of righteousness. We have access to the Father by one Spirit. The church is built together for habitation of God through the Spirit. God has chosen His people unto, unto salvation through sanctification of the Spirit. The saved are elect according to the foreknowledge of God and through sanctification of the Spirit. We obey the truth through the Spirit. We are washed, sanctified, and justified by the Spirit. The Spirit is the one that's changing us from glory to glory, one stage of glory to another. Then we have the fruit of the Spirit. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. And the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us according to the will of God. Now there's some things about the Holy Spirit. See, this is the age of the Spirit. This was not the kind of age, the old covenant of the old covenant. The Holy Spirit wasn't absent, but he wasn't prominent. Wasn't a problem, but he is now. What I'm saying was when the Holy Spirit came down on Jesus, he never went back. Hmm? He remained. He remained with Jesus. Then when Jesus went back, he formally sent him to stay till the thing's over. Jesus having the preeminence, and we see this still continued in the thought of the Spirit reigning in the That's new covenant right. because Jesus said that the Spirit would testify of Him. Yeah, He's mm -hmm. the Spirit of Christ. Yeah. 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 In other words, He's the, He's our Jesus, so to speak. Uh -huh. Jesus, said, I will come. I will come again to you. What well, was the Holy Spirit that That's actually right, yes. actually came? He continued the work. In other words, He's going yes. to continue right. the work from the standpoint of Earth. No, I, Matthew's gospel says that he, he, Jesus, saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Mark's gospel reads, and straightway coming up out of the water, he saw, he saw the heavens open and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him, Jesus. John's gospel says, and John bear record saying, I saw the Holy Spirit descending from heaven and in the boat upon him. So both Jesus and John yeah. saw the Spirit. Amen. Jesus saw it as a personal attestation by God. John saw it as a confirmation that this is, yes. this is the one. Amen. John had been told, mm -hmm. upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining, mm -hmm. the same as he that baptizes with the Holy Ghost.
Now there, I'm not going to name these because it's, uh, I don't want to get bogged down, but there are a number of appearances of heavenly persons or things that took place on earth, and I list them. It's not a lot of them. Believe me, it's not a lot of them. But there are some. Heavenly persons or realities that were visibilized, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so to speak, for men. Yeah. But that's not all that happened. Mm -hmm. A voice came from heaven confirming there's living personalities. Yes. <laughs> this is not just like a domain. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now there are some people on earth that have heard somebody speak out of heaven. Mm -hmm. The first one of record was Hagar. Mm -hmm. She heard the voice of an angel calling to her out of heaven, Hagar. Israel was told out of heaven, Moses told them out of heaven, he made thee to hear his voice. The people Israel heard. Nebuchadnezzar, if I fell a voice from heaven, when he said, look at this great Babel that I've created, fell a voice from heaven, see he heard a voice from heaven. Jesus heard a voice from heaven. When he's baptized, also in John 12, he asked, Father, glorify thy name and a voice from heaven. Mm -hmm. Bogus said, I have glorified it, will glorify it again. Peter heard a voice from heaven. Mm -hmm. Remember when he sent to the Cornelius, a voice from heaven, let, first a net was let out with some unclean animals, and then a voice from heaven said, Rise, kill, and eat. Mm -hmm. John, he, he heard a voice from heaven. In Revelation 4 1. And in Revelation, several, several times in Revelation 10, chapters 10, 14, and 18, John said, I heard a voice from heaven. Mm -hmm. So you say, well, I wish I could hear a voice from heaven. Well, are you that important? Do you need a voice from heaven for what you're doing? Mm -hmm. These are important people. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. This record should be enough to convince you. Amen. That's right. There is someone who speaks to to those on earth mm -hmm. yes. from heaven. Yes. Yes. And we are told categorically, don't refuse him that speaks from heaven. So there is, see, there is, there is a heaven, mm -hmm. someone is there, mm -hmm. and he's speaking to men on earth. Amen. Now the voice said, thou art my beloved son. Mm -hmm. <coughs> that was to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thou art my beloved son. Another one of the gospels, the word was said to John. He said, "This is my beloved son." See, so that was that was said to said to John. So a word, whether they were simultaneous or not, I don't know. But mm -hmm. Jesus heard the words, "Thou art my beloved son." Yes. John heard, "This is my mm -hmm. beloved son." Mm -hmm. Now the love of God for the world mm -hmm. is a qualified love. Yeah. Uh -huh. He so mm -hmm. was it particular kind of love. Yeah. He so, mm -hmm. people quote that, he so loved the world, they, they forget the soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that it's in past tense. Now, he doesn't say God loves the world. Yes, amen. I know men say that, I know that, but it's just the Bible doesn't say that. Mm -hmm. So love the world. His love was qualified. The son was when man, God's love for man is associated with mercy. God who is rich in mercy for his great love with he loved us. But the love he had for his son didn't have mercy. Uh -huh, uh -huh, that's right. He didn't have mercy on Jesus. Jesus didn't need mercy. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Now my judgment, there's not enough being said about God loving Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I like this statement of Jesus. He said, the Father loves the Son and hath given all things into his hand. Again, Jesus said, the Father loves the Son and showeth him all things. To ensure God loves you, that you experience God loving you, you've got to love Jesus. Amen. That's where it's experienced. See, there's too much theorizing about God's love. People theorize about it. But to experience the love of God, you've got to love Jesus. Some people are fond of saying, God loves you so much. All right. 
So that may sound good, but it's dead wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The so much one that he loves is Christ. Yeah. Yes. He so much loved Christ. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It's got to be seen. Then he says, in thee I'm well pleased. So if God loves you, experience, we're talking about experientially. Yes. Provisionally, God's provided for everybody to be saved and to be loved by him. That provision's been made for this to be done. But Jesus actually experienced, he said, I'm well pleased. When God loves you, yes. he will be able to say, I'm talking about ex you experience God's love. Like if you're married, it's not too comforting to know you're living in Joplin, your wife's living in Africa, and she loves you. I mean, that doesn't like, <laughs> what does that mean? That's, that's not, but you, you want to be with her. So if you want to be with God and have God love you, you've got to love Jesus. In fact, he told his disciples that the Father loves you because you love me and believed I came out from God. Yes. And you am well pleased. And Jesus did not have to be admonished. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Well pleased. That's after that's after thirty years. Mm -hmm. So he uh Jesus never experienced the terrible twos. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Or whatever the threes are and the fours are either. He didn't. That's right. The emphasis here is on God's approval. See, that's, it's not on God's affection, although he does have an affection for the Son, but the emphasis is his approval. Yes, amen. His approval of the Son to do the work of saving men. Whoever saves men has to be approved by God. God has to have the stamp of approved on that person. Yes, amen. So he put it on him right here. I'm well pleased, well yeah. pleased. Yes. You know, some people, I, I think, have a, a problem with that, that, that Jesus didn't go through the terrible twos or threes, and, and I, I don't think that they would vocalize it, but, but yeah. see, the, thing, the problem is, is that they'll say, well, er, every child misbehaves at some point. But see, they're, they're commenting on someone who is born with a fallen nature. That's right. Jesus yeah. didn't have a fallen That's nature. Right. So see, he he would not have just instinctively been bad. He would right. not have. That's right. He would have been good. Someone would have to die for him. Yes. Yeah, if Jesus was innately sinful, then he someone had to pay for his sin. Amen. At the age of thirty. That's kind of that's an important age in uh, scripture. For instance, the priests, the Levites, they became priests when they were 30. Mm -hmm. Joseph, remember when Joseph was elevated to be ruler of Egypt? He was 30. Mm -hmm. King David, when he began to reign, he was 30. Mm -hmm. So this commence, Jesus commences his ministry at 30. Mm -hmm. He's passed through about everything you're going to be able to pass through. He's been faithful. He's proved to be a good steward. And also, he's a minister in things pertaining to God. He's like the priests of old. Jesus has not been ordained of God to make you successful or whatever. You don't really need Jesus to do that. An angel can do that. There have been angels do stuff like that. You don't need Jesus for that, to answer your, fulfill your dreams and all this. You don't need a Savior for that. Yeah. Right. And really it's not that all important in the first place. Yeah. Jesus is a high priest. Jesus was a high priest like the high priest of old in things pertaining to God. Yeah. That's what priests are for in things that have to do with God, man and God. Yes. Jesus hasn't been ordained to, for things pertaining to you and your employer, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or you and your mate, or you and your children. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you don't get help in those areas. I'm saying that's not what Jesus is all about. 
got to see this. If you don't see this, you'll neglect the one thing Jesus came to do, to save his people from their sins. That's what he came to do. And all these others will sidetrack you. There's grace for it. I understand there's grace for it. The Holy Spirit can help you. Angels are your ministers, mm -hmm. servants. That, that's one of the things angels do. Mm -hmm. Get involved in the nitty-gritty of your life. Mm -hmm. That's not what Jesus is all about. Now, as I mentioned, more is said about Jesus' baptism than anyone else's. I mentioned again some of those names. Now let's take a... Uh, I have a bird's eye view of Matthew's account. That's Luke's account of Jesus' baptism. Matthew's account is found in Matthew 3, 13 through 17. I gather that you're familiar with it. Some things are said here that aren't said in any of the Gospels. Jesus came to John, but John forbade him. John refused to baptize Jesus. Some of the versions say that he, John tried to talk him out of it. John was forbidding him, so forth. Uh, John was, keep in mind who John was. John is position of the Holy Spirit and what had been revealed to him. He was filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. He was told how he was going to know how to identify Jesus. He knew Jesus was the Lamb of God that took away the sin of the world. Yet John balked mm -hmm. at what Jesus required of him to bab to bab for John to baptize him. Now you see, this confirms us that spiritual knowledge is not academic. Mm -hmm. Academic knowledge is what we call abstract knowledge. It's not experienced knowledge. It's theoretic in the sense you haven't experienced it. But knowing Christ is not that kind of knowledge. It isn't because the Bible tells me so. I mean, it, I'm sorry it goes a little deeper to that. You do have to know what the Bible says. But if you don't understand it, it doesn't do any good. Here's John. Jesus comes to him to be baptized. He knows that the Son of God is going to be made known, but he, he has, for some reason, he hasn't put it together. Why? Why didn't he put it together? It wasn't because he, like, was a sinful man. It's because this was too big. This is too big of a thing for him to process in his mind. Now, you, if you are a Bible student, and I trust you all are, you will eventually come across things your mind is not able to process it. You might know, if you could say one, two, three, you could cite all the facts and all that, but you can't, pro that's what I understand this to say. John was not unable to like fit all this, fit all of this together. And that wasn't owing to him, it was owing to the time. He was living in like an interim time in between the old covenant and the new covenant. It was before people were born again. Yeah. Uh -huh. huh? It was before sin had been put away. Mm -hmm. hmm? yeah. It was before people were justified. Mm -hmm. See? That's the period just so well. I can understand how this would be hard to yeah. Yeah. put this together. Jesus said to John the Baptist, this is found in Matthew 11, 11, Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of a woman, there hath not arisen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding he that's least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Well, how can, how can that be? Up to John the Baptist, I mean, we're talking about Moses, Elijah, Elisha, Isaiah, Jeremiah. We're talking about men of that caliber. He said none of them were greater than John the Baptist. Yeah. Whoever's least in the kingdom, he's greater than John the Baptist. Well, now if you just took person to person, you and John the Baptist, you're like, you're a midget and he's a giant. I mean, if you just want to go person to person. But John was in a valley, and you're on a mountain. The reason he that's, 
he that's in Christ is greater than John the Baptist because, yes, they're a midget, but they're on a mountain. Mm -hmm. And John's a giant, but he's in a valley. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the only reason you're greater is because of where you are, mm -hmm. not because of who you are. Amen. See? Mm -hmm. Also, it must be underscored here that there's a certain... Um, transcendency to the divine mind. When we talk about the thoughts of God or the purposes of God or the will of God, mm -hmm. we shouldn't expect it to be simple. Yeah, that's right. yeah. mm -hmm. God goes on record. He tells you, I hath not seen, he hath not heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things, things, mm -hmm. God has prepared for them that love him. See, that's just one, that's just one small thing that God does. <laughs> God has prepared some things, mm -hmm. realities, for those who love him. But there's no way you could imagine what they are. It's bigger. See, it's, that's what John was uh, experiencing. Now he says, I have need to be baptized of thee. Now this thing kind of cleared up a little bit to me because coming from the background I come from, is it was hard to deal with this text. John says, I, you need to baptize me. I don't need to baptize you. Now, what was he talking about? Well, this is what I think he was talking about. John said, and then we'll deal with it a little bit later, that Jesus was going, he says, I baptize with water. He that comes after me is going to baptize with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. mm. There's no record in Scripture of Jesus ever baptizing anybody with water. Mm. In fact, it's categorically said he didn't do that. Yeah. Uh -huh. So here's what I think John was saying. You need to baptize me with the Holy Spirit rather than me baptizing you with water. Mm -hmm. That's what I think he was saying. So you, you'll have to decide whether you agree with that or not, but that's... That's a, I can't make sense out of it. Mm -hmm. this was before John, before John had seen the song. That's right. Mm -hmm. But he had said, but he had said. Mm -hmm. this, was the, this is the first thing he said about Jesus. Mm -hmm. You never hear this in the circles that I walked in. You never heard this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this said that Jesus baptizes with the Holy Spirit. But as it said several places, mm -hmm. it's my understanding this is what Paul was talking about when he says we are by one Spirit baptized into one body. That's 1 Corinthians 12, 13. If that's what he was, that's what he was talking about. <clears throat> All right, that's Matthew's account. Let's look at Mark's account. Mark says he, Jesus came from Nazareth to be baptized. See, the other writers... I won't say that. I think Matthew says he came from Galilee. He came from Nazareth. Nazareth was rough about 25 miles away. Mm -hmm. So Jesus had to uh, walk mm. 25 miles mm -hmm. to be baptized. Mm -hmm. I mean, how far did you go? I mean, well, you kind of compare your own baptism. Like what kind of inconvenience was imposed on you? Got in a car and drove there, or whatever. See this. This is how mysterious this was to Jesus. See, mm -hmm. Jesus didn't balk at anything he was required to do, and this was something he was required to do. Mm -hmm. He wasn't baptized in Nazareth. That's where he was raised. Why not baptize him in Nazareth? That's where he was raised. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nazareth was an unbelieving city, yeah. uh -huh. and it had a bad reputation morally. It wasn't a place to be baptized. And coming up says straightway. Straightway means immediately. Yeah, right. Straightway coming up out of the water. As soon as he came up, the heavens, heavens were opened. And he, John saw the Holy Spirit descending in the form of a dove. And he heard the words... Thou art my beloved son. Mm -hmm. This is my beloved son, whom I'm well pleased. Mm -hmm. Let's look, look briefly at John's account. 
John says, I knew him not. Now John two times he says this. Mm -hmm. John 131 and verse 33, I knew him not. I didn't recognize him. Mm -hmm. Didn't know that he was the one he was to, but the forerunner for. He didn't, he didn't recognize him. Now this isn't, shouldn't surprise us. After he'd been some time with the disciples, mm -hmm. Remember that time they were in the storm? Mm -hmm. Jesus come walking to them on the sea and he quieted the storm and stilled the waves. And after being with Jesus for, for a while, they feared exceedingly and said, What manner of man is this? Mm -hmm. See? It hadn't registered, it hadn't registered mm -hmm. on them. Oh. Yeah. It was a while before it registered on me who Jesus really was. Mm -hmm. I believed he was a son of God to the greatest extent as I could, I think. But it was some years later before it kind of <laughs> dawned on me who Jesus really was. See, anyone who's basically disobedient to Jesus, they don't think about Jesus, they don't follow Jesus, it hasn't dawned on them who he is. They don't know who he is. That's what the problem is. They don't know who he is. <laughs> Anyone who knows Jesus, who he is, says, what do you want me to do? Amen. If it's catch a fish and pick a coin out of his mouth, that's what I'll do. Yes. Yeah. I think this needs to be preached a lot. I do. I, do think, I think this needs to be preached to urge people to know who Jesus is because God will help you to know this. The scriptures teach you. The Holy Spirit sheds light on it. And once you see who Jesus is, you will be obedient. Mm -hmm. Jesus is not known for who he really is until you're joined to him. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Now John said, I knew that he should be made manifest to Israel. God was going to, God, I knew that God was going to tell us who, who the Messiah was. Mm -hmm. I knew that, but I, I didn't know yet. I, there he was. I, mm -hmm. I didn't know him. Knew him not. You can imagine how humil humbling this must have been to John and looking back on it. Say, yeah. oh, how could I not known, you know, but like the two on the road to Emmaus, they're walking with Jesus, the resurrection. They didn't know it. Hmm? Mary's talking to him in the garden after he rose from the dead. She didn't know it. <laughs> The women, they're talking with an angel, and they met Jesus. They didn't, they didn't know it at first. They didn't, they didn't know it. See, you may have been with Jesus for quite a while before you knew it. All right, now I, I want to deal some with this. He shall baptize with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> There's been a lot of distorted teaching about be, the baptism. The first of all, this phrase, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, is not in Scripture. That's a sectarian expression. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Baptized with the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. That's a sectarian cliche. It's not in the Bible. If you don't believe me, just try and find it. It's not there. So what about, what is this? I come from a group that says this just happened to the apostles and maybe a few others. I want to I answer that. Now there's three instances where it said this happened. First of the day of Pentecost, Acts 2.33. You're not familiar with these texts, you've searched them out yourself. The house of Cornelius, it happened there, and Peter said it, they, Lord did to them just like he did to us, and the Ephesian disciples in Acts 19, who had been baptized with the baptism of John, but they, they didn't know about Jesus. So Paul told them about Jesus. Again, they were, they, they were baptized with the Spirit, and the Spirit came on them. Some texts have fell on them. Now, what about this? 
All right, now, these three occasions, Pentecost, House of Cornelius, the disciples of Ephesus, were all three epochs. Uh -huh. yep. They were the sort of thing that happens like once, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the occasion, mm -hmm. once. The day of Pentecost, the day of salvation, the door of salvation was thrown open. Well. It happened there, not because it was only going to happen there, but there was a specific indication that said that it had happened there. Yeah. 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 At the house of Cornelius, for the first time after a decade, yeah. the Gentiles were accepted. Yeah. Yeah. So it happened there yeah. to confirm the Gentiles had been received. Yes. The Ephesian disciples, at the last time, the baptism of John mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was recognized. Yeah. The baptism of John apparently terminated, its validity terminated at that point. Mm -hmm. So, see, these are three unique mm -hmm. points in time. Mm -hmm. And so, Jesus baptized them all with the Spirit, but because of the times, there were special mm -hmm. indicators to confirm this is what was happening. Yeah. Yeah. But having confirmed it once, it doesn't have to be confirmed over and over again. It's enough not to say, this is how Jesus baptizes. Jesus amen. does not baptize with water. Yeah, amen. <laughs> amen. That's right. He baptizes with the Spirit. Uh -huh. It's never said he did it in past tense. Uh -huh. This is how you get in the Spirit. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. This is how you get into the Spirit. Uh -huh. We're not in the flesh, but in. Yeah. Well, how do we get in there? We, you can see that, I think. Amen. For a long time, I, I wrestled with this because I didn't feel comfortable with what I had been taught. But I couldn't, I didn't have any answer for it, but then I realized it. There's a lot of things that happened at beginnings that don't happen yeah, otherwise. That's right. At the beginnings, God can paralyze a whole nation and bring it out, but He doesn't do that every time. Yeah, that's right. yeah. So the beginnings are like that. At, si at Sinai, there were things happened at Sinai that didn't happen at any other time. It was yeah. at the beginning of the covenant, see? Mm -hmm. So that, that's the way God works. When something, a, a new thing mm -hmm. is done, there's a special consideration of that so the people can adapt. Now to me, um, I'm confound, confounded and irritated that this thing that's said about Jesus, he shall baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire, that this is not being preached mm -hmm. as it should be. I think there are some that preach it. And when he says baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire, he's not talking about hell. Yeah, that's right. He's talking about the spirit of cleansing and burning that yes. Isaiah talked about. Mm -hmm. yes. Jesus didn't come to send people to hell. Yeah. Amen. He will eventually, I understand he eventually dispatched him, but that's not why he came. So, you, it, part of working out your salvation of fear and trembling is coming to the point where you're personally satisfied in this area. Nobody else can yeah. Yeah. make you comfortable with this. Uh -huh. I've, I've, the thing has been resolved in my own mind, but nobody else could resolve it for me. I, uh -huh. yeah. And I'm glad it's that way. I really am glad it's that yeah. way. Amen. Yeah, we were condemned already on our own before Jesus. Came. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm. But this, this properly interprets being in the Spirit, mm -hmm. see, it tells you how you got in. Yes, amen. Spirit is to Jesus' baptism what water was to John's baptism. Yes. Uh -huh. He amen. baptized with water. Uh -huh. Jesus baptizes with the Spirit, yes, amen. which means it's a spiritual. See, That's right. amen. Water, water was for the body. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's right. <laughs> But when you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, that's not for the body, mm -hmm. unless it's setting it apart. Yeah. It's for your spirit. Amen. All right, that's all I think I have for, the, for you tonight.
Any of you have something you'd like to add tonight? <laughs> All right, we'll have a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the baptism of Jesus, for the noble example he set for us. We thank you that he is a baptizer himself. And is so proclaimed. Mm -hmm. We ask that if any of us have difficulty understanding this, that you would clarify it to us, uh -huh. help us to see it correctly, and to enjoy his benefits. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.